the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Of all grace, King of kings, Lord of lords, Someone praying. Let tonight be my night, O God. I open up my heart to hear, to be delivered, to be changed, even by the power of the Holy Spirit. hallelujah in the name of jesus christ the bible declares they go from strength to strength as many as appear before the lord in zion is someone ready to pray cry for a definite encounter tonight lord i have not just come to clap i have not just come to watch others blessed visit me in a mighty way is someone pray give me a lifetime encounter a lifetime visitation in the name of jesus christ May tonight be one of those nights you will not forget in a hurry. In the name of Jesus Christ. By wisdom, O oh God, heaven's gates open up. With understanding you order the season. Creating day and night, turning darkness into light. Arranging the stars to your pleasing, but a cool and I don't know. I'm a but a cool and I don't know. Father, give us an encounter that will last our lifetime tonight. Let your word come with superior power. Let it give us a reorientation. Let it validate and establish our authority. For in Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Please be seated. I welcome everyone. To this marvelous service in the name of Jesus and for our family in Zaria Zaria family is following let's give them a big God bless you and then may the Lord bless all who are following by way of television by way of the internet the Lord will do you good in Jesus name hallelujah complete deliverance part one complete 
deliverance we're starting our deliverance series and please for the sake of your destiny for the sake of everyone you love i want you to pay attention the spirit that distracts you tonight must be a demonic spirit and you must be prepared to cast it out of your destiny hallelujah please don't take lightly what i'm telling you i want you to pay attention you will be amazed at how many people god will use your understanding are we together i prayed my heart out and i told god as for me i will give my best in partnership with your spirit it's up to you now to listen because for someone god is going to be answering your age-long prayer for for you and i know that we minister healing we minister deliverance all the time but you see when the word of god is taught god gives you understanding i'm trusting that god will so rubbish the devil and demystify him in this series that you will see the practicality of your authority in christ in the name of jesus john chapter 8 from verse 36 let's read from amplified john chapter 6 chapter 8 from verse 36 amplified let's read together are you ready one to read so if the son liberates you makes you free men then you are really and unquestionably free one more time so if the son liberates you makes you free men mm. really and unquestionably free may that be your testimony in the name of jesus so this this is a discourse on the subject of demonology and deliverance we want to examine the basis for the liberty of the saints that it is god's desire and the bible has made it very clear that there is a level of liberty that the saints in light should walk in free from the orchestrations of darkness whatsoever but as it is you know by now that this is a kingdom that operates by light say light please shout it again say light this is a kingdom that is knowledge dependent that means no matter if there's someone under the anointing please help them are we together it's a kingdom that operates by light that means it truly does not matter what God says or does not say if you are ignorant of the dynamics it can make what God has said as potent and as powerful as it is it can make God look helpless in your life Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6 my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge my people although they are my people they are destroyed for the lack of knowledge so this is a three-part series today will be part one next week will be part two the week after part three this is a very serious discussion let's have the course contents down part one please write all that we're going to be discussing part one we're going to be looking at the biblical basis for the study of Satan and demons. Under part one, we're going to be looking at the biblical basis for the study of Satan and demon. Does the Bible give us the allowance to study Satan, to study demons? Is it scriptural to study the orchestrations of darkness? The biblical basis for the study of Satan and demons. Number two, under part one, we're going to look at the origin of Satan and demon spirits. Where did he come from? What exactly is his agenda? What is Satan about? 
who is he who was he the origin of satan and demons you can't imagine how ignorant many believers are as far as the knowledge of these spiritual truths concerned number three we will look at the reality of evil the reality of evil you can put a dash there in scripture and in our world today the reality of evil dash in scripture and in our world today let me repeat part one we'll be discussing the biblical basis for the study of satan and demons then we'll look at the origin of satan and demon spirits we want to examine from the lens of scripture where this adversary who has oppressed god's people so much where did he come from and what is his mission what exactly is his goal why is he so determined to destroy every one of us if allowed and then the reality of evil we'll first look at evil from scripture and then in our world today hallelujah can i give you part two or do we leave till next week <laughs> Part two, what are we going to be discussing under part two? Number one, the structure and the operation of Satan and demons. Under part two now. Don't confuse your notes, organize it so that you, when you are studying, you understand what you're writing. The structure and operation of Satan and demons. The Bible is very clear as to the fact that Satan operates a very intelligent organogram. There is a structure. There is hierarchy. There is a way that Satan operates. So we'll look at the structure and the operation of Satan and demons. Then we will now begin to examine proper the biblical concept of deliverance. That's the next point part two now the structure and the operation of satan demons then the biblical concept of deliverance the biblical concept of deliverance number three under part two access points we are going to be examining the concept of access points what are the gateways that give satan access to the life of the believer of a people because the bible lets us know that satan can have access points and he can lay claim over people and over destinies and then we're going to be looking at the nature of the flesh this thing the bible calls the flesh we understand from scripture that this is the principal access point that satan has we will be examining the flesh do you have that down the structure and the operation of satan and demons then the biblical concept of deliverance then access points and then the flesh part three very quickly under part three we're going to look at the topic administering deliverance Number one, under part three, administering deliverance. We'll be studying the administration of deliverance. How do we administer deliverance? Under that topic, if you want to put as a subtopic, we'll put the three levels of complete deliverance. You may want to add it. Under administering deliverance, subtopic, the three levels of complete deliverance. Remember, the whole series is called complete deliverance you will be learning that it is possible to experience a level a measure of deliverance and not be delivered completely but the bible says that whosoever the son sets free that he ensures that that person is really and unquestionably free hallelujah the three levels of complete deliverance then we'll be looking at 
what I title weapons of victory weapons of victory slash the whole armor of God weapons of victory slash the whole armor of God there is such a thing as the whole armor of God and there are weapons that have been given to us as believers to command and maintain our victory in Christ so we'll be looking at weapons of victory slash the whole armor of God then hopefully we'll touch here and there what I put here as imbalances around the subject of deliverance you may want to add it somewhere imbalances around the subject of deliverance we will be looking at what is biblical about deliverance and what is not biblical because I can assure you it is not everything that is done around the deliverance apostolic and prophetic ministry that is biblical and scriptural we must be able to put perspective so that God will grant us grace hallelujah can you lay your hands on what you just wrote and say father I receive understanding it would not just be a note but it will be transferred to my spirit and the benefit will speak in my life here and now go ahead please pray in one minute lay your hands as a prophetic point of um, contact and pray declaring by the spirit that you will not just be here as alone but you will be doers in the name of jesus christ amen and amen right so please pay attention as i begin to teach the lord will grant us grace in jesus name now theologically speaking the subject of satan demons um, exorcism deliverance comes under a theological caption of demonology are we together now demonology is the study of demons satan the satanic structure and everything that relates to the operation of darkness i have taught you that in in studying the bible from a theological angle it is broken into many structures to enable the believer have understanding we have theology comes from the word theos the study of god the triune nature of god hallelujah so you study god to know who he is and then it helps you to be able to relate with god then we have anthropology anthropology comes from the word anthropos the study of man our our biological build up our historic you know um, build up and all of that is an attempt to know and to understand man as the zenith of god's creation who is man and what is it about man why did god mandate man to be the chief steward of earth and then we now look at things like um, demonology the study of satan demons the satanic structure what was satan looking for when he came to tempt man and all the fall of man and all of these things then we look at what we call soteriology soteriology is the study of salvation the entire plan of salvation beginning from the fall of man until the resurrection of jesus are we together then we look at pneumatology pneumatology is the study of the ministry the person the ministry and the office of the holy spirit because when jesus died and resurrected he gathered the disciples together and handed them over to the ministry so our, dispens our dispensation the dispensation of the church age is also the dispensation of the holy spirit hallelujah so we have pneumatology and then we have uh well there are other interjections here and there like christology the study of jesus now as that plan jesus was not just a man jesus was also a strategy god's strategy given to man to redeem man then we study ecclesiology now the church the church the fruit of redemption we have now come this is where we now teach on kingdom advance the gospel influence spiritual growth and maturity what the local assembly is about you know and all the facets of the kingdom and then 
we wrap up by studying from a theological standpoint now what we call eschatology eschatology is the study of the end times the bible says if our hope is only in this world we are of all men most miserable so we have to understand through the eye of prophecy what lies before us as things begin to unfold so that is classically how to study the bible when you want to have a rich and balanced spiritual growth you compartmentalize these aspects and you study them in detail they may not carry all those names but it is important that believers be exposed to all these seven or eight dimensions to be holistically built if you are left if you are left out in any of these areas aforementioned you will find out that your spiritual growth will be lopsided are we together praise the name of the lord now write this down just for the records the word deliver the word deliver d-e-l-i-v-e-r the word deliver occurs about 594 times in the entire bible the word deliver occurs about 594 times in the entire scripture meaning from genesis to revelation of course factoring the different versions the word deliver occurs about 594 times in the entire bible and then the word deliverance deliverance occurs 179 times using 12 translations as a reference if you use the various translations that we have the 12 major translations as a reference the word deliverance occurs 179 times if you use the kjv for instance for many of us who are king james people it occurs about 41 times in the entire bible using kjv as a reference that is to tell you that it must be a very serious subject for it to have this kind and this frequency of occurrence now let's look at the biblical basis we're looking at the biblical basis for the study of satan because the reason why i'm teaching this is there are many people in the body of christ preachers believers who believe that it is anti-christ anti-kingdom even anti-new creation to ever deal with anything that has to do with satan in fact most people may want to suggest that anything that has to do with demonic activities demonic structure should not be mentioned among god's people and um they're, they're, those 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 suggestions are very sincere you must understand it comes from the understanding that it is out of the abundance of what is in your heart and your mind that you live out and that if you spend your time studying on satan studying on demons chances are excellent that your entire life will be governed by fear and all of this so the people who purport negating satan and all of these things and focusing on jesus they they are teaching from a well-meaning standpoint but many of you know that for you to become exceptional in anything you must be exposed to all the dimensions of that thing when you are teaching someone how to drive professionally there must be a study on accidents there must be a study on what to do there is no pilot who becomes professional who will not study what to do if and when a plane crashes that does not mean the goal is for him to crash are we together but woe betides a pilot who never went through the lecture on how to manage situations like that by the way let me give us our foundational scriptures my apologies i didn't give us scriptures um i will give us let me give us four or five we're going to do a lot of bible reading we're christians and this is a very deep and um this is a very touchy subject so we need to do a lot of leaning on scripture obadiah 1 and 17 first scripture in addition to that which we open the teaching with obadiah 1 17 but upon mount zion shall be deliverance where will deliverance happen 
so the idea that deliverance should not happen in the house of god is already the, this scripture just answers it once and for all that upon mount zion that is even the proper place where there should be deliverance and there shall be holiness and the house of jacob shall possess their possessions matthew chapter 6 and verse 13 surprisingly this is jesus himself teaching are you ready to read what you he said and lead us not into temptation but deliver us jesus is teaching the people how to pray and he's saying in your prayer make sure that this is captured that you should be delivered and he tells you what you should be delivered from evil that means you can become a victim of evil if you are not delivered from it lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil luke chapter 4 please and verse 18 jesus now went to the temple remember after his temptation jesus went to the temple in fact let's start from verse 17 so that we put perspective to it the bible says can we back up 16 let's let's do 16 it will be very fair the bible says he came to nazareth where he had been brought up and as his custom was he went into the synagogue on the sabbath day and stood up for to read 17 now and there was delivered to him the book of the prophet so we know that it was not a book a superstitious book we know that it was not some christian science it was the book of prophet isaiah and when he had opened the book he found the place where it was written now let's read 18 together ready one to read the spirit of the lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor uh-huh he had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to preach one more time that line to preach deliverance to the captives hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on to preach deliverance to the captives that means it tells you immediately that deliverance is not only conducted deliverance is preached there is a dimension of deliverance that is preached it is not just about laying on of hands we're coming there are we together to preach deliverance to the captives uh-huh and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised just stop there so jesus said part of my assignment my messianic the description of my assignment is to also do something about the issue of those who are in captivity to bring deliverance for them we already dealt with john 8 32 let's look at the last scripture second timothy chapter 4 and verse 18 i want you to read this one loud and clear when we have it are you ready may that be your testimony in jesus name one to read let's read together and the lord shall deliver me from every evil walk and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever Amen. it says the lord shall deliver me from how many every evil walk so there is something called evil walk the walks of darkness programmed against individuals and he said the lord shall deliver me now from a from a theological standpoint the first mention of the word deliverance strangely is found in genesis 45 and verse 7 and this had to do with joseph speaking about the reason for why he came to the palace joseph is speaking now to his brothers he said god sent me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your lives how by a great so what does deliverance do it can save deliverance also leads to salvation that the way to be saved is through deliverance god sent me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance hallelujah 
is there a biblical basis for the study of satan is there a biblical basis for the study of demons and their operations is there a biblical basis for the study of deliverance should the believer study the subject of deliverance why do we need to study deliverance at least we know for a shorty that jesus died he defeated satan he said it is finished we know that today he's seated at the right hand of the father we know he has given us the victory why then do we have to study satan why then do we have to study demons why then do we have to study the operations of the satanic kingdom why do we have to study the subject of deliverance is there a biblical basis now please look up let me teach you how how to extract the thoughts of god in scripture anything is qualified to be a doctrine i have taught you about doctrines the word doctrine comes from the latin word doctrina it means a predefined body of knowledge that is intended to make a student become something exact doctrine are we together and that believers mature in this kingdom through the sound exegesis of doctrine every time doctrine is communicated is able to empower the believers to be people of stature and maturity anything is qualified to be a doctrine if it passes these three tests never forget this anything that cannot pass these three tests is not qualified to be called doctrine number one that subject matter or that thought must be captured in the old testament it must be a subject that was captured in the old testament that means you must be able to find scriptural references where that subject matter was discussed and engaged in the old testament test number two jesus in his earth work must have taught that subject or acted in keeping with that subject so the first test is the test of that subject being taught or uh, engaged in the old testament and then it must be seen in the earth work and the life and ministry of jesus christ number three that subject or that thought line must be captured in the teachings of the apostles and the early church so any teaching that was not captured in the old testament any teaching that was not captured in the life of jesus who midwife the old and the new any teaching that was not captured in the life of the early church and the apostles does not qualify to be doctrine it can be an a supporting opinion that a prophet had are we together now so we can have the authority to deal with a subject using a doctrinal stance if we can find that subject taught or references made to that subject or that thought line in the old testament it must be a subject that jesus spoke about and it must be a subject that we saw discussed in the life of the apostles and the early church so let's look at the subject of satan demons and their operation from the old testament i'll be giving you a few references remember what we are doing we are establishing the biblical basis for discussing this so that your heart will be open because some of us respectfully speaking we have come through the journey of different christian um, organizations we've sat under different well-intentioned well-meaning men and women of god across the globe and sometimes when you hear teachings like this uh, what is coming there will be that fight your loyalty to what you have known before now your loyalty to what your man of god or whoever it is that mentored you spiritually you can feel listening to a message like this is a betrayal to your loyalty to a message that has been taught you and so i'm using the bible so that your heart will be open to now learn doctrine are we ready in the old testament the first idea of satan the first idea of the operation of evil was revealed in what we call the fall of man genesis chapter 3 and genesis chapter 4 please write it down for reference the fall of man 
the bible tells us that satan was absolutely responsible for the fall of man you find that in genesis chapter 3 and genesis chapter 4 there are many stories in the old testament but because the bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses a matter is established i will just use two or three references and then that would suffice for this discussion so the first capture of the reality of darkness evil satan and a discussion that related to that in fact according to scripture it was not only adam that had a discussion with satan even god had a discussion with satan is that true genesis chapter 3 and genesis chapter 4 the second story very quickly captured from the old testament as we see is the story of job now classically speaking in theology the story of job is believed to be um the most the greatest expression of the operation of satan and darkness over man because when you read the entire 42 chapters of job the most important in my opinion of the 42 chapters is chapters 1 and 2 and then chapters 42 chapters 1 and 2 talks about the two levels of his test is that true the test on his wealth and his children then chapter 2 the test on his health and then chapter 42 we see that it was the restoration of job every other thing that happened in between elihu the story all of that is important the reason why i'm putting it before others is i know that the book of job from a chronological arrangement of scripture in as much as we know comes before psalms but um if the bible were to be arranged properly from its its chrono chronologically the book of job is believed to be somewhere in between genesis and exodus are we together i hope you know that the arrangement of the bible from genesis to revelation as we know now is not accurate in terms of its chronological arrangement nothing is exactly wrong with it but in terms of its chronology means as the events occurred sometimes when you need to go into the deeper layer of bible study you will have to arrange the bible chronologically to now make sense as you explore in fact it is one of the ways we studied scripture maybe one day we'll discuss it here how to study the bible there are many templates for studying the bible number one you can study the bible according to the various books and the bible is classified according to various books number one there is a torah or the pentateuch the five books of moses are we together and then there is what is called the poetic books all of the books that have to do with poetic descriptions ecclesiastes you know proverbs and all of that and then we have what we call the prophets the major and the minor prophets are we together and then we have um what we call the gospels the four books that represent the gospel we have the book of acts we have the epistles then we have revelation we also have judges and all of these all the other books that the that that chronicle the events of kings beginning from king saul because it was not god's desire that men would have an earthly king he wanted to be king directly over them but because of their desire wanting a king god used samuel to anoint saul and then you have lots of other kings that ruled israel josiah and joash being the youngest josiah ruled at age nine joash ruled at age eight we have a lot of other people like that so when you read the bible you can study the bible based on these books you can also study the bible topically are we still learning there is the topical study of the bible that means you can pick faith and study you can pick the ministry of jesus and study you can pick the fruit of the spirit in fact it's it's the topical study of the bible has proven to be the most effective the reason is because it addresses the issue of your concern immediately if you study the subject of faith and you gain understanding you can begin to see the results immediately and it will serve as a motivation and a consolation then there is the chronological study of bible 
the word chronos just means the passage of time the arrangement of the chapters and the verses and the books according to the time they occurred hallelujah so back to our discussion we're examining the biblical basis for the study of satan demons and their operations and we said the old testament has number one the fall of man seen in genesis chapter 3 and verse 4 and then number two the story of job the entire book of job but more specifically job chapter 1 chapter 2 and 42 chapter 1 and chapter 2 archives the events that happened to job we don't have the time we would have gone through it but job was a man the bible records that he feared god and eschewed evil and one day there was a gathering before the lord we're going to deal with that because you see this subject has a lot of schools of thoughts and controversial angles to it for instance when you read the book of job you will see that as at the time the sons of god went to see god the bible says satan was in their midst it already uses that name satan for him meaning he had fallen he was never called satan in his glorified state his name was lucifer and yet the bible says in the judgment of satan there was no more found a place for him in heaven so you see this already brings controversy as there are schools of thought that believe that satan still has access to heaven and access to the presence of god till today and yet others use revelation chapter 12 to say no way the bible says there is no place found for him so let me say it up front that the discourse about the entire subject of demonology is not to create arguments but to be able to filter the factors that are useful to guide our understanding are we together we are not in a theological argument my assignment is to filter the parts that i believe is necessary for our understanding and then we'll fire on from there if you're with me say amen. amen dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Kata Branda Katekatos. Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and make a path. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.